Hey everybody, this is Aaron the Pedantic. Uh, today I wanted to talk about timing and time in D&D uh, &D and other RPGs. Uh, but before I do that, I wanted to do a little shout out for a uh, friend of the channel who made a video that y'all should really check out. I, would, I have subscribed to his channel and it's... Uh, basically, some very high quality stuff. Uh, a lot, it really puts me to shame in a lot of ways. Uh, but the video that he made was about uh, safety in role playing games, and it's very funny. Um, yeah, perhaps, perhaps a little bit, a uh, little bit of fun at some others' expense. Uh, critical Role is mentioned, but it's really entertaining and uh, really cool. He's a cool guy, so. I'll put the link in the description. Please go check it out. Give him some support. As far as I know, there haven't really been a whole lot of videos on that channel. But uh, I'm sure there's going to be more to come. But they probably take a lot longer than mine <laughs> as far as uh, production goes. But anyway, uh, we're here to talk about time. Time tracking in role-playing games. Now, it's uh, no secret that I'm a newer DM. So a lot of the things that I talk about are from that perspective. And uh, incorporating very rel well, relatively strict time measurement into the game is something that uh, I only really started doing not too terribly long ago. I've kind of uh, incrementally added more and more layers of it through uh, my time running games. And it was only recently whenever I just wanted to run pure BX that I decided, you know, no, I'm going to go all in on this and I'm going to follow as much structure as possible. And, you know, the reason that I'm bringing this up is because, you know, I had uh, somebody, a friend, basically say that, uh, you know, they were, weren't really sure about adding that all in yet. Um, and I can just, because I, like, only recently uh, really went full tilt on it myself, uh, I can I can give some some perspective perhaps on how that transition has been uh, with fresh eyes, whereas most of you I imagine are probably going to be thinking, well, I've been doing this forever, <laughs> so like, what's your problem? You know, it's kind of it's kind of like the the parents don't understand kind of thing, you know, um, which uh, maybe not maybe not the best example because that's usually kind of a. a teenagers not knowing things. But in this case, um, whenever I started really going through the motions of putting all this stuff in, um, you know, you, you think of what people are already probably doing. And that is going to be, uh, you know, with the largest swath of role-playing gamers, you know, that we have, uh, with 5e being probably the biggest pool, most of them are familiar with, okay, you know, you've got the six second round, you've got, uh, you know, a ritual that may take 10 minutes, uh, you've got the eight, eight hour, you know, long rest, the uh, t one hour short rest, which a lot of people for some reason think is 10 minutes. I think that that's Critical Role's fault. Um, but you have these things together and uh, then you have some durations for spells. And outside of those particular things, there's really not a whole lot of metrics that people tend to use. So I, I don't want to frame this as in everyone uses, but tend to use for tracking time in uh, in newer D and D. Um, <clears throat> and uh, so that what this tends to do is that a lot of this just ends up being kind of arbitrary. Well, I feel like it's been about this amount of time, uh, so this or that. And this was something that I always felt kind of uncomfortable with whenever I was running uh, 5e, is that, you know, players would ask, well, you know, how, how what, what time of day is it now? And, you know, typically I would be like, well, uh, system-wise... Y'all haven't really, it's been like no time at all because I'm only tracking combat and, you know, like you just kind of waltzed in here. So the the fact that I didn't have that frame of reference, and I'm sorry, I think I just hit the computer, um, in order to put the time into perspective meant that it was really just kind of up to, well, I'm, I'm maybe about this long, which inherently there's nothing terribly wrong with that. However... Um, what, you know, timing does, and I've already done a video on, on timing to a degree, uh, is, you know, it gives you a frame of reference for you to insert whatever is going on in the background. Not only that, but you can track, uh, things on a much more minute level. 
Um, there's, there's just a lot of things that really fall into place when you start doing this. Uh, perhaps one of the most uh, daunting things for me at first was because of the fact that I'm a very literal person. Oh, Chelsea's trying to call me. I'll have to call her in just a minute. Um, because of the fact that I'm a very literal person, um, I look at the rules and I say, okay, so each uh, this m much movement is going to take about 10 minutes in a dungeon environment because you're mapping, because it's dark, you're being careful, uh, all this kind of stuff. And uh, so that is going to be the baseline. So that means that every time they travel this much distance, then I need to do this and this and this. And then, and then so, you know, because this is BX, we've kind of learned that, you know, these things happen and then we tend to kind of uh, make our own um, declarations about, okay, but what about what happens with this factor or this factor or this factor? Because not everything is going to be just clear cut in just the way that they presented it, which is fine. If you want that kind of really in-depth declaration, then you can get it from a crunchier system perhaps. Um, but, you know, for for what I ended up having to do was, you know, realize that, okay, well, you know, let's say that they don't move at all, but they're just sitting around. How long does it take for it to be a turn? You know, um, how, uh, what, what actions do I consider to, to take a turn? Uh, you know, because some of these things aren't really mentioned, you know, uh, as far as I can remember, you know, somebody, somebody may be able to correct me. Um, my, uh, I, I'm not a, uh, at this point, a system purist, you know, in that I don't memorize every single word as I did with fifth edition. Instead, I read, I get the general message, and then I refer back if necessary, uh, because I've kind of gotten to the point where I'm pretty comfortable with a lot of things. But uh, as far as the procedures go, I'm pretty on point. But what I'm trying to say is that, for instance, for me, um, anytime that you're going to search an area, it's a turn. Uh, Any time that you are going to try and pick a lock, it's a turn. And, you know, some people are going to say, well, it's not going to take you 10 minutes necessarily to to pick a lock. And you know, that may be the case. Uh, but at the same time, it's an abstraction that's very helpful. Uh, so and, you know, let's say let's say that they roll extremely. Extremely well. Let's say that they have a 30% chance to pick a lock and then they roll a, you know, something between one and five. Then I may say that, you know, you pick the lock within like two minutes. So you got plenty of time to spare. Uh, and we can take these kinds of um, these kinds of liberties because we are the masters of the system. And that is the important distinction. We are not the slaves to the system. We are the masters of the system. So we use the system as a tool. And so even though there are all these things that we may have to keep track of, like, okay, so, uh, you know, we've had two turns pass time for a random encounter roll. Uh, okay, so we ended up fighting. Now that the fight's over, it's been another turn. That's another thing that a lot of people don't really take into consideration, which they don't have to necessarily. But I do like the rule that, well, after the fight was over, you spent like the next, the remainder of the 10 minutes getting your... Uh, you know, your, your bandages, you know, done, just, you know, like uh, doing whatever you needed to, to, to refresh yourselves. But to then say, okay, well, I casted this spell last for nine turns. So now I need to, you know, kind of keep track of that. Has that worn off yet? Uh, how about our torches? Um, all that kind of stuff. And then there's a rule that I always forget about. And uh, my friend Hayden pointed this out to me and he's like, do you just not like that rule? And uh, the answer is no, I just <laughs> I just forget about it pretty often. Uh, and that is the, uh, do you take a, a, a turn to rest uh, every hour, basically, you know, or else you have penalties that apply for not resting. Uh, if you don't rest for at least one turn every every five or six turns. Um, so there, there are a lot of things to consider, but at the same time, it really helps you build a cadence with your players that they can, they understand that, okay, so, you know, whenever I take the time to do this, that means that there is a chance that we may get a, a wandering monster uh, encounter. Is that something I want to risk? Uh, you know, our, our torches are dying down, you know, um, all this stuff, it just all comes together. And... Like I said, I understand that it can be daunting at first to just I I don't just I don't just write down every little effect that is currently in place, uh, every little um, 
every little, you know, torch, every everything. Um, what I do is, you know, every, basically every so, every turn or so, I'm like, okay, so what else was going on? All right, that was a bit ago. Uh, how long ago was that? Uh, you know, that kind of thing. And then, and then I, I may do some internal math to try and figure it out. The durations are typically never so long that it uh, becomes a serious burden. Um, usually a lot of the durations that I end up having to, to worry about are in the maybe five turn range, you know, something like that. A potion maybe is a D6 plus six turns, uh, and uh, those may be a little bit on the lengthier end. So, uh, but you could just kind of think of it as, okay, two torches from now, you know, kind of thing. Um but what I'm trying to say is that whenever, whenever you actually uh, put it put it into practice, at least this has been my experience. Some people may say otherwise. Uh, the you know the kind of burden of having to do this just kind of melts away because it number one it becomes second nature and secondly it becomes less of a pressure. I think that there is a serious feeling of pressure whenever you're trying to incorporate more complexity to the game because then you're holding yourself at a higher account than you were before. Uh, whereas in the past, you probably were handling things a little bit more loosey-goosey. And that is inherently easier for you to feel satisfied with yourself. Um, so I would say that the important thing to do is just be prepared to feel uncomfortable, you know, uh, you know, with, with, with what your performance is, you know, like you're gonna mess up. And I, I proved that with my last video, because in my opinion, I messed up really hard. Uh, <laughs> but, um, you're going to mess up, but you're going to do better in the end. Uh, and even then you will still mess up from time to time because we are human and, uh, that will happen. But I, I think that, you know, tracking time is incredibly important and it has greatly enhanced the game. You know, just the, the ways that we've had some incredibly, tense moments erupt because of the fact that I was tracking very closely that time uh, has been wonderful. It's been wonderful. And um, I think that it's one of the many things that people lose whenever they are going to play with the more um, loosey-goosey kind of way. You know, and people could say the same about, well, you're playing a rules light system. It doesn't have very intense combat rules and you're missing out on these things in this thing. And, you know, that is true if that's something that you value. So that's that's kind of where this disconnect is, is because, you know, the people that enjoy the kind of game that and it isn't mutually exclusive. You can enjoy the kind of game that I'm talking about where you have uh, more serious tracking on exploration. Uh, but a little bit less on combat and then really not much emphasis on uh, narrative development. Um, and you can simultaneously enjoy other games that focus primarily on the narrative development. The, it's possible to have both tastes at the same time and to just not want them to uh, mix in a certain way. That's perfectly possible. And I will, I'll tell you this just from my own personal experience, because I enjoy both really I do, but I, when I want the, the challenge game, then I have to really focus on, uh, tracking things because that's how the, the challenge is introduced in a way that's honest. Uh, whenever I want the, uh, more character acting kind of game, then it's not quite as important, you know, because people generally are wanting to spend their time uh, just having the, the the encounter presented to them and then reacting uh, to the encounter as their character and then deciding what the the uh, path to the next encounter is going to be like. Not so much the uh, the tactics and things like that. It's a lot more of just character portrayal and... Um, deciding the scope of the narrative and all that kind of stuff. And I'm using the word narrative, even though I desperately hate uh, the comparison to story, but uh, I, I don't really have, uh, I guess um, the, I guess drama is really the better word. Drama is really the better word, I would say. Uh, Im improvisational drama. 
Although there are some games that are actually story games. Uh, it's just people don't usually ever talk about them whenever they say it. So uh, that is my, th those are my thoughts on uh, timing, uh, why it's important, and why if you're not incorporating it already, and you're maybe daunt, you know, like feel like it's a daunting task to introduce these things, like Nike, just do it. But don't, don't, don't do Nike. <laughs> uh, no, this is not going to be a, a, a boycotting political channel, so don't worry. But um, yeah, so that's it. That's it for today. Um, I wanted to, I want to do some, some more videos on um, revamping uh, classes for old school essentials, uh, looking at how I might change them to better suit my interests. And um, I also want to do some, like some more formal chalt reviews because i've actually gone really deep into chalt um and uh talk about some other rpgs i've picked up like uh stars with not stars without well, well i have picked that up but worlds without number um and i got a uh, monster of the week which is part of the reason why i'm talking about narrative style games uh so you know a lot of stuff coming ahead and uh thanks for tuning in and y'all have a wonderful day